So once upon a time I was, um, uh, I had a friend of mine who was living on my couch. Um, he was a very employable guy, uh, just come out of probably Ireland's most prestigious university, but um, for whatever reason his job search was broken. So every day he would get up and he had, he had completed his thesis in green energy, so really had a focus on an area that he would like to work in. Um, and every day he would get up and he would visit the career sites of all the companies he had a desire to work in. And every day he was met with, there's no job vacancy for you, or please email your CV into careers at blackhole.com, or, uh, you know, job irrelevant, etc., etc., etc. And then he would go on to LinkedIn and Indeed and Career Builder and all the other brilliant job boards that are out there. And he would press, you know, find a job relevant to him, he would press apply, and then he would be asked to email his CV into careers at blackhell.com. So his journey was fundamentally broken. He was getting no great insight into the companies that he wanted to work for. Um, he was, you know, he, he, he was effectively, had sent his CV into all of the databases, all of their ATSs. Um, his, data, his CV was now, or his resume was now out of date in the 10 or 12 companies that he had a desire to work in. And he was effectively lost to them. So when, when they did have a role, he was getting no updates. Um, his resume was out of date. They would never search him. Uh, never reach out to him with any detailed information about upcoming opportunities or events. Um, and of course, w w when, they, when they do want to hire someone like him, when, that, when a role does become available, they have to go out and pay for it, right? So they've got to go out and pay a recruiter to go find him or pay a, a job board to go try to get his attention again. But of course he has a job um, and now he's passive and now he's lost forever. So that, that's how I started Jobby.com to try to fix this journey for, for both talent and companies. I'm going to try not to speak too much about Jobio because I don't want this to be a sales pitch. I'm just going to talk a little bit about inbound hiring and some of the methodologies that we use and um, might come into it, but uh, please forgive me um, for that. Right, so inbound hiring is a talent acquisition strategy, really, right, for the way people search for jobs today. Um, and obviously, it's clearly designed to attract the right people to the right roles. So, because clearly, if the right people are in the right roles, everybody's happier, companies are better, uh, people are happier in their jobs, they stay longer, less churn, uh, people are more fulfilled. So when you're trying to get the, if you put a strategy in place to attract the right people, um, I think you end up w with the right employee. So really inbound hiring looks at three things. It's how to attract the talent in the first place, the right talent. It's how easy you make it for them to convert and then how you nurture them once they have converted. So whether it be uh, in a talent pool or how you engage them in the future, how you make them aware of roles that come up in your company. Um, and, and really what, you're, what you're, you're gonna end up doing is actually saving yourself time, saving yourself lots of money uh, with recruiters, etc., and actually attracting uh, the right person in the first place. So I, I always think there are four pillars when it comes to inbound hiring. Clearly the first is attraction, what you look like to the world, how you're perceived. Second is amplification, where you put that message. Um, third is conversion, how easy, for you, how easy do you make it for people to, to actually apply. And fourth is what do you do now that you have their details. So I'm just going to talk through um, these four points. Attraction. So really it's about employer branding, right? So people tend to self-select. That's what they do when they go on, go on about their job search. They look into the, the company. They, they try to figure out if it's a, the right place for them. So you have to engage an employer branding strategy if your company is going to attract the right people. So pe the way in which people engage with companies is they read job ads and they say, you know, is this company relevant to me? And if it is relevant, they self-select and they apply. And really what you're trying to do is, is to help them understand what you're truly like so that they can see themselves in the position and therefore apply. And the logic being that obviously if you're being authentic, um, if you show people what you're actually looking for, well then you're much more likely to get someone you're actually looking for to, to apply, right? So there's lots of ways you can, um, I suppose, uh, engage in, with your employer brand. There's clearly you can create content, you know, you can even have your own staff create content. Uh, as long as it's really authentic, um, 
you know, that's a, clearly a huge bonus. It's very simple to picture who you're trying to target with this um, information. So for example, you could easily look back at your own employees, see who's successful, see what type of person they are, see what stuff they might engage with, and then plot the type of stuff you should be creating based on the type of people you're trying to attract. You're much more likely to attract passive people with employer branding than you are with a job ad, right? They're much more likely to be on Twitter, and uh, maybe seeing a, an employee's referral video, maybe they're on Instagram and they see the, the cake bake sale or whatever it might be. They might see it's a, an environment that suits them. Again, you're much more likely to get someone that's suitable to you. And the candidate experience, as we all know, starts way before the job application. They, they're clearly, they're on Glassdoor, they're, they're, they are, they're on LinkedIn looking at your employees, they're seeing the type of people they'd like to work with. Um, and they're making their decisions based on those things. So it's, it's so important to get your employer brand right. Um, and, and if you do get it right, you are far more likely to attract people that are relevant to, to your business. The second is amplification, right? So you do have a, you now have an employer brand, right? But where do you put it, right? There's, there's very little point in creating a great employer brand and then not putting it in front of the right eyeballs. So how do you get your content in front of the right eyeballs? Um, and there's, of course, lots of ways which you can do that. You've got to, again, go back to who you're targeting, figure out where they live online every day, um, and, and get your content there. So if they're reading tech blogs or tech magazines, then you need to, feature, you need to try to get your story featured on tech blogs and tech magazines. You're much more likely to engage a passive audience there. You're much more likely to attract the right type of person. Where do your job ads appear? You know, do they appear on you know, aggregators where maybe less passive people are, the active job seekers live. Are you trying to attract active people or are you trying to attract the right people or people who are sitting in your competitors? So you really have to think about where else online your jobs will appear in order to again attract the right people. Um, you know, there are over, you know, I, I write 50 because we engage with 50, but we put jobs in, with one click in 50, 50 places um, around Canada and North America um, because we believe there are, there are different types of talent on different types of job board. So you really have to do your research into which type of talent you're trying to attract, and therefore which job board you may or may not uh, need to use. And then there's a media network. So we're, we at Jobia, we're building a, a media network of, where, where the audiences are exclusive, right? So we have big um, tech national newspapers across Europe. We have tech blogs and magazines across North America but really trying to get the passive audience to engage with relevant content where they live every day. The third um, pillar is conversion. So how do you create a world-class talent experience, right? Everybody says, you know, so if we go back to my friend, he, he presses apply on LinkedIn and Indeed and all those other places, and he's being asked to fill out a form effectively with an ATS every time he applies for a job. So if you just think about that journey from his perspective, he's entering his name, his email, he's uploading his resume, he's filling out all the forms. He's basically creating a profile over and over and over and over again. And really, you've got to think about how you should, could fix that journey, how you convert the people you have managed to attract to your employer brand. And obviously, if you make conversion easy or easier, your conversion rate goes up, you get more applicants, you get more relevant people. So there's clearly lots of ways you can do or look to do that. I often challenge our customers to apply for their own jobs across their own um, ATSs or simply go on to one of the job boards they use and press apply and see what happens. And sometimes you end up with 50 or 60 or 70 steps just to, just to actually apply for the job where really what you're trying to do is, is reduce the barriers here, right? So it actually need, you need to find a way to make application instant, make it more fluid make it direct, uh, as in directly into the right people in your organization, make it mobile optimized. Amazingly, it's 2018, we're still talking about making job application mobile. Um, you would think you'd crack that by now, uh, but, it, but it's true, it needs to happen. Um, and then, uh, of course, the last one is nurturing, right? So now you have all this amazing talent, you've put out the right employer brand, you've put it in clever places, you've made conversion really easy for them. Uh, what happens next? So if you think about it, and I often challenge people to do this, think about all the CVs that have gone into all your organizations over the course of the last 10 years. You're into the millions and millions of talent, right? But yet you have no access to them. 
their CVs are out of date, you aren't using them for any future hiring. These are people that have shown a genuine interest in, in working for your company, yet we're not, they're, they're not being treated like people, they're actually being treated like databases and CVs um, and, 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 and that type of thing. When really, when you think about it, these are human beings, um, their careers have evolved. How are you uh, treating them now? As in, so clearly, ATS systems are, uh, you know, the, 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 um, the, the data is out of date, I'll call it. Uh, people aren't being um, communicated with in any engaging way. So you've got to find a way to turn ATS into live ATS or hiring CRM, right? You've got to find a way to build live talent pools of people who have a desire to work for your brand and keep in touch with them. Let them know when there's an update. Uh, let them know when there's an event happening. Let them know when there's a change to, uh, for the positive uh, within your business. Let them know when there's roles coming up because that's when you're really targeting. You're after the guys who've applied to your job maybe in the past and now they have five years experience in your field and that you can now get in front of them at the touch of a button while they're sitting working for your competitor, not while they're trolling job boards. Because again, you're trying to attract the right person, not, not any person. And then of course, it's the events, you know, the, the relevant content that you have and the relevant opportunities you have in the future. So by building relationships, nurturing the relationships of the talent you've already drawn to your business when you've attracted them with your employer brand, you're much more likely to get a relevant person and much more likely to, to make a relevant hire. So really, that, that, that's the point of an inbound hiring strategy. It's about actually treating these people like people and not resumes or pieces of paper. You're hiring, uh, you've got to think about who you're, who you're hiring, what type of people you're targeting, what content you can create, what authentic content you can maybe ask your own staff to create to get in front of these right people. And of course, you've got to make it really easy for them to convert, really easy, really easy for them to stay in touch, really easy for them to, to be nurtured by your content um, by your updates and by all the things that may save yourself money down the road because you've built a talent community and you can avoid a recruitment fee. Um, and all of this is very, very, this isn't rocket science, it's actually very easy to do, um, no matter what platform you, you use, Jobio or not. So Jobio, I told you it wasn't going to be a sales pitch, but I have one slide. So that's what we do. We're a careers marketplace for a talent side where, where companies get to leverage their employer brand to attract the right people. And then we're an inbound hiring platform for companies who are, who are trying to target the right people. And we work with about 6,000 companies globally, two or 300 in Canada um, alone. And that's me. Thanks for your time.